Well, hello, hello again, everybody. Welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Allison Rouse, your most notorious groupie and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing, all my new subscribers. It's so exciting to meet you guys in the comments. I am really excited. I'm glad that people are initiating the chats and taking part. Thank you so much for all that really awesome love and support. I appreciate it so, so much. So much. And I'm getting new YouTube gear so I can make it a little more professional. Got some exciting things coming up with this. So subscribe. Hit that like button. And grab your cocktails because today we're going to do some more cocktails and rocktails. We are talking about an amazing band from the 80s. Now this band, they didn't have the... They had a few really awesome hits, but they didn't ever skyrocket into where I thought they should have gone because their lead singer, whom I fell so deeply for and adored, is an incredible songwriter and does amazing hooks in reminiscent of ACDC. And they did cover an ACDC song as well, I believe. We're going to talk about Dirty Looks and Henrik Ostergaard right here. This is when I very first met them in May of 1988. But we're talking about when I re-met Henrik around 92 or 93. And in honor of Henrik who passed away several years ago, we're gonna do his favorite drink. Two fingers of Jack, one of Coke, a couple ice cubes. So everybody, grab your Jack and Cokes, kick, kick up your heels, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails, shall we? Cheers, big ears. All right. And just before we start, I want to express that these videos I make, I do set at not made for children. So if you are under age of consent, please be respectful, okay? They are not made for tender ears. So anyway, okay. So like I said, the first time I met Henrik, Dirty Looks had just had their big hit, Ruby, and um, Cool From The Wire, that was the album. And had come to the Speedway Cafe in Salt Lake City. I will talk more about the Speedway because it was such an awesome club, second only to CBGB's, but the bathrooms were way grosser, so gross. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, those bathrooms, I would rather pee in the curb by the homeless people, thank you very much. Probably did. <laughs> So anyway, when we met them, Kristen's parents were out of town. I was probably still 17, so was Kristen. And we took the guys after the show back to Kristen's house. Henrik, and, I wanted Henrik, but their drummer Jean was hot too. And this girl Tiffany, I went to beauty college with my senior year. I was going to beauty college, high school, working at Burger King, and hanging out with bands. It was a full plate. But she she seemed to be with Henrik or something. I couldn't tell, so I just wasn't going to bother with it. So I was getting along with their drummer, Jean, really great. So after the show, Henrik, Tiffany, everybody comes over to Kristen's house. We're having drinks. We're smoking weed, doing whatever. I'm hooking up with Jean, and Henrik kind of starts to get in a pissy mood. He's talking to me a lot, but I'm not cluing in. So... He gets pissed off. He looks at Tiffany and goes, fine, let's just go. Just gets pissed off and leaves. So I hook up with Jean. Kristen comes in, makes out with us for a while. You know, we have a little rock and roll night. Well, fast forward years later, about 1992. Dirty Looks is coming back to Salt Lake City and playing another small rock club called Rafters. And I will do like I've been promising, a tour of where the clubs are so you guys can kind of see. Some of them are not here anymore, so I'll do my best so you guys can have the visual. But they were opening up for Night Ranger. And I was at work when my DJ pulled me to the side in the DJ booth and he was like, hey, I just got a phone call because he also worked at this club rafters as a front door guy on his off nights. So he's like, I just got a phone call. The you know, there's a couple guys from uh, Night Ranger that want to come in. He's like, I want to make sure you go on stage, this and this and that. So, 
there was the guy from Brad, a couple guys from Night Ranger come in. They're talking to me. They're like, you should come by the club. You know, we're all just going to the bar that we're playing at tomorrow night to have a few drinks when you get off work. Okay, I was off work at like 10, 11 o'clock. So I talked to Jade, who was with me at Ugly Kid Joe. <laughs> She's so much fun. I love Jade. I talked her into going with me. And when we walk into the door at Rafters, where everybody knows me, I see Paul, who is the guitar player of Dirty Looks. And he's like, hey, Allison. He said my name, and this kind of shocked me because I hadn't seen these guys for years, four years. And I was blonde the last time I saw these guys. So he, I started talking to Paul, and we were chatting. He's like, yeah, Henrik is at the bar, and he's looking for you. Why is he looking for me? I, like I said, I was even shocked that they remembered me or knew who I was because my hair had gone from blonde to black. So anyway, Jade and I walk over to the bar. Paul, you know, is like, look who I found. It's Allison. Hey, Henrik. Gives me a big hug. His face lights up because we walk into the bar. He's just leaning on the bar. Kind of in one of Henrik's moods. Because Henrik had some moods. And he was not in the best of mood this day. Until Paul came over. We started talking and he's like, look, it's Allison. And Henrik just was like, oh my God, girl, hey. So great to see you. I love the hair. And just gave me the biggest hug. Started ordering drinks. And that began this crazy little night we were about to have. So we have a couple drinks. The guys from... Uh, Night Ranger come over and Brad's like, oh, hey, like, remember me? I invited you. I'm like, yeah, who cares? <laughs> I don't fucking care. See ya. You know, because I was enjoying Henrik's company. Just, he's hot. What can I say? Henrik was a very handsome man. And he just had a really great personality. It was such a sweet guy underneath it all. So, we have a couple drinks at Rafters. It's closing time. And Jade and the rest of the band and I all decide that we're going to go back to the hotel. Henrik's like, you're coming back to the hotel with me, right? Right? Yeah. So a bunch of us jump in my car. A few other people get in a cab. We all go back to their hotel, which was not downtown because Rafters was kind of way south from downtown. But they were in a hotel close by where a lot of the bands who played Rafters stayed. So we go back. We're all sitting in a room smoking weed because this is a pot-heavy band. So we're smoking our weed, having some more drinks, enjoying our time. When Henrik's like, come back to my room. And so he was still sharing room with, I think it was Jack. Was he the drummer or the bass player? One of them. But he was sharing a room with Jack. So we went into the room, started making out. We're getting kind of naked. And Henrik just got this spur of the moment. And he's... We were joking around, and he took me on the bed. He's like, I'm just going to total WWE you, or WWF is what it was at the time, the wrestling. And so he took me over his shoulder and just tossed me onto the bed. So I'm in my underwear, and I bounce up. And I'm like, oh, no. He goes to the other bed, and we're bouncing back and forth and decide we're just going to totally have a wrestling match. And, we, <laughs> and it was totally harmless. It was totally fun. So we're jumping back from bed to bed. I'm getting, I'm tackling him. He's got me in a scissor hold. I'll get my legs around his neck. And when all of a sudden, from behind us, because the door was behind us from the beds the way we were facing, we hear, hey, Allison, are you okay? And I just see the door cracked far enough because, like I said, we had the latch on it. So you couldn't open the door more than this. So I just see Jack and Paul's faces. <laughs> Like, are you okay? I'm all, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Ah, whoa. <laughs> you know? So they're like, well, we are just coming by because we decided to go to Denny's and see if you guys want to come. Henrik's like, Denny's? I'm like, yeah, Denny's. He's like, yeah, let's go get something to eat and we'll come back. Okay. So, and I'm wearing this long, fully button up kind of black with reddish pinkish flowers dress. I mean, it's long. And I had it buttoned down so I had this cute little bra and buttoned way up so you could see my little thigh highs and my cute little booties because it was the 90s. That kind of look, but I made it sexy. So, instead of me putting on the dress, Henrik runs over and he throws on my dress. 
and he buttons it up. And he's and it's just barely buttoned because he was a thin guy and I was a skinny girl too. So he buttons it up and he's like, I should wear your, don't I look pretty? And he's just dancing around my dress. He's like, I want to wear this to Denny's. I'm like, well, what am I going to wear? He's like, my clothes. So I throw on his khakis and his favorite DRI shirt. In this picture I'm going to put at the end of the uh, vlog, he's wearing the shirt and it was his favorite shirt. And, oh, this picture, I love this picture because he gave it to me. The rest of the band was supposed to go on stage in their skivvies, and only Henrik was the one that went on stage in his knickers. So anyway, we go over to, everybody else is already over at Denny's, and when we walk in, the whole band, everybody just sees Henrik in this long dress, <laughs> and me in Henrik's DRI shirt. We're just cruising in. Do, 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 do. He's got on his combat boots, I've got on my heels with the comb, with the, you know, his, and I've got them tied up, and the band just starts catcalling and whistling, and we're just laughing our asses off, having such a good time, and then we decide to order breakfast, and the waiter comes over, and he's like, hi, darling, how are you, sweetheart, just teasing Henrik, Henrik was like, all right, that's a little too much, so we ate our breakfast, got out of there, we're going back to his room, and he was telling me how much he wanted to be alone with me. He didn't want to be in bed with me with someone else in the room. So he did something that he really liked. Well, after we stopped by the pool and we skinny dipped for about 20 minutes in the pool before the security guards came out, we're like, and Hendrick's like, woo, this is really cold. So making out and stuff and skinny dipping in the pool, having a good time, we run in, and he gets decides to get us our own private room which was a big huge thing because Henrik was married and his wife took care of the bills and this is one of three guys that had a woman at home but at the time I did not know he was married he just was like well I should get us a room and I was just like well you don't have to you know we can go back to my place whatever and he's like no I have to stay with the band so he ended up using his credit card, personal credit card, and getting us the room. It's where all night, like he just did not stop. And it wasn't just sexual, like Henrik and I, from the second we started talking at the bar that night, it was just like instant like magnets, just you couldn't pry us apart. And we were, like I said, we were just in our own little world, we were always talking to each other, we were having long conversations which he did not tell me he was married and he did not ever wear a wedding ring ever this is only the first vlog about Henrik and I's roller coaster so him having a wife will come in to play about a year later six months to a year later mm -hmm. cheers fuck will come into play it's the day he tried to punch Stevie Rochelle from Tough. Yeah, Stevie Rochelle, that was me. He was going to punch you over. You you bragged about it on your now defunct website, Metal Sludge, for so long. Yep, I was the bitch. He punched you over. Anyway, so all night long, we are just talking and really, truly, like, connecting through the physical, the mental, emotional. And I didn't expect it. I mean, I was just going to rafters that night just to go have a few drinks. Didn't want to hook up with any, anybody, really, until Henrik and I started talking. And, yeah. Not sure when it happened, but something happened for us both that night that was a lot deeper than, oh, shit, than just the rock star groupie connection. So... Yeah, like I said, this is just the first time. Woke up the next day. He's like, God, I really don't want to leave you. He's like, I, I would just want to stay in this hotel room together. Let's just stay here. And he can't, of course. So after, you know, morning loving and long goodbyes, and I actually cried. I never cry. I never get emotional or tear up or anything when I'm normally leaving the rock boys once in a great while yes because my emotions don't get involved tonight hmm.
a lot of emotions became involved. And Dirty Looks would play Salt Lake City at least once a month, if not every other week for a while, for the next year. Even the bus broke down one time. And they didn't think they could make the show coming from Denver. And Henrik was like, fuck that, we are getting that bus fixed. We are going to Salt Lake City because they also had three days off after Salt Lake City. And Henrik wanted to spend it here with me. So, that, you guys, is my first night hooking up with Henrik Ostergaard from Dirty Looks. Extremely emotion, emotional times that we had together. And extremely endearing and fun. And he was such an amazing man, but he did have a bit of a jealous streak. So, you're going to have to tune into other vlogs to find out all about that. So hit that subscribe button, hit the share, hit the like if you want to hear more stories like this because not all my stories are just sex, drugs, and rock and roll like James Hetfield, like Henrik, and a few others, Vinnie Paul, Steve Jones. There was a lot more involved. And fuck, I knew I was in so much trouble the morning after with Henrik. Like, Jesus Christ. What kind of roller coaster am I fucking in for now? Tune in later to find out, guys. All right, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit my bells. Tune in next week for some more cocktails and rocktails. Don't forget about my merchandise line linked down below. You can buy my book from the link down below. And if you are reading it for free, I'm okay with that. I get paid around three dollars for the free reads but you have to read the first page and the last and everything in between and I know a lot of people just want to read certain parts I'm cool with that because you have certain different interests in different bands and I'm okay with that so all right guys see you next week for some more cocktails and rocktails cheers big ears <laughs>